Devin, get over here. Oh, he's about to fall. Uh. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Uh, I had to double check. If it had been a boom slong in a tree, I could be on my way to being dead right now. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. There's hardly a sight as pretty as the sunset on the savannah. It's such a gorgeous and serene setting. It really is a place that has to be seen to be appreciated. And as much as I'd love to just sit here and take it in, we can't do that because we're on the hunt for fat-tailed geckos. But now that the temperature is dropping and the sun is setting, they should be out and about because fat-tailed geckos easily overheat. This is when they're gonna be actively foraging, looking for tasty little insects like termites and little tiny crickets to feast upon. So let's go. The hard part about finding them out here actually isn't their numbers. It's the fact that there's so much grass, you have to find the open areas to really spot them. I found some nice pie over here. And when I say pie, I don't mean the type that you want to eat. So cow pies gives a great environment for animals to escape heat. That moisture also attracts prey items and it becomes artificial cover. So yeah. Oh, speaking of poo, this is incredibly convenient. This is a dung beetle. See how he's all curled up? That's his defensive posture. Dung beetles are part of the scarab family, and even though they're best known from Africa, they actually occur many places around the world, including the deserts of Arizona and Florida. Dung beetles are fecal matter specialists in that they'll gather the animal droppings and make a ball out of it. And then the females will put their eggs in that ball of poo and they'll bury it. It kind of looks like a turd hush puppy. So I'm gonna let this little roller get back on its ball and ways. Dung beetle. David, get over here. Oh, he's about to fall. Ugh. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Uh, I had to double check if it had been a boom slong in a tree. I could be on my way to being dead right now. But it's not, it's just a bush snake or a phyllothamnus. These guys are totally diurnal, but they rest in the trees at night. This one is really young, it's small, but they get big. About a meter or three feet on some species, slightly larger on others. Phyllothamnus are cool. They've got black tongues with like really brilliant blue. The inside of their mouth on this species is actually black, which is cool. There are several species of bush snakes. They all look fairly similar. Some are spotted, some have slight pattern, but they're all very visual arboreal coolivers. These scales allow them to just climb right up trees and pretty much anything they want. This is the Spider-Man of snakes. I will say, if you're going to keep phyllothamnus or bush snakes, they need an arboreal tank, meaning vertically oriented, because they're not gonna use the ground space. They're gonna spend most of their time hiding out in the bushes, looking for lizards, and basking. They do bask quite a bit. So this is yet another animal I would say needs a basking light. So pendulant water, vertically oriented setup, lots of trees, basking light, and some lizards. You got all that, you might just be able to keep a bush snake. These guys are almost the African equivalent to the Asian vine snakes. They are fun to watch. All right, little guy. Go back to bed. It's way past your bedtime. Off to go find what we came here for. Oh, right there, right there, right there. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. So this is an African fat-tailed gecko.
Where are you going? Hmm? Where are you going? We have more to talk about. You can't just walk away. Come here. Come here. Chubby little tail, big dark eyes. This is the striped morph, so it's a natural occurring morph that you get here in West Africa. Now this gecko's tail isn't quite as fat as I've seen them before. When they don't get enough food, they store it here. Also moisture. In captivity, you'll see them with really fat bulbous tails. It's because they always have food and they always have water available. I actually bought my nephew a fat-tailed gecko for his first pet reptile and it's been a couple years now. He loves the thing. Why, why not? Total just placidity and it's cute. Easy to take care of and friendly and they check all the boxes. What, am I boring you now? Okay. I think she's decided she doesn't appreciate her company. That is understandable. She is a gecko and we are loud, kind of strange creatures that have just approached her home, so. Let's get some measurements. Since this is a nocturnal animal, our UV measurements aren't gonna matter. I will note though, that if you're setting them up, one way to do it is to offer them two hides, a dry hide and a moist hide, and give your animal the choice if it wants to be humid or dry. In fact, it's always a great idea to let the animal make the decision of how it wants to live. A nice thing about fat tail geckos as beginner pets is unlike a lot of your agamas, like your amastics or bearded dragons, they don't require UV light. So the initial setup on these guys is actually much more affordable. They're also pretty easy to keep, and as you can tell, totally docile. If you're looking for a beginner herp or just something fun with a little personality to add to your pet family already, definitely consider fat-tailed geckos. They're easy to take care of, they've got great personalities, and they're a lot of fun to have in your home.